Hi, just a quick heads up about this video. The audio device that was recording our voices uh, unfortunately had a glitch and did not function correctly, um, but we did have other devices there in the room that were recording sound, so we have the audio, although it's not the quality that you're probably used to, so my apologies for that. Also, this was shot at the end of a long, hot, muggy, humid day. Um, it was raining while we were loading gear in and out, um, and you can probably tell. Um, it's not as refined as some of our videos are. We committed the cardinal sin of talking while the organ was playing at the same time. Um, so I do hope you'll forgive those mistakes. Um, this is a very interesting organ and Doug McNeil was very generous with his time and his expertise in showing us the organ and demonstrating it for us. Um, so I do hope you'll power through. We did a good job of capturing the sound of the organ. Uh, that's very authentic. So uh, I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today we are in Madison, Wisconsin still, and we are at Covenant Presbyterian Church. With me is Doug McNeil, and you are the organist here at Covenant? That's right. All right, and how long have you been playing this organ? Uh, 19 years. Oh, 19, so you're very familiar with this instrument. Um, <laughs> tell us what we're looking at. So this is a, a Schoenstein um, instrument. It was built in 1997. Um, and so I'm the, the third organist. The person who was in charge of the building of, or in charge of the uh, design of the instrument was Sam um, Hutchinson, who was organist at um, the Overture Center here in Madison. So this is a three manual instrument, but with five, uh, with six divisions actually. So I was gonna ask you about that. There's more stuff than you have keys and pedals for. <laughs> you have That's quite right. the array of, of shoes down there. Um, that yes. tells me there's more going on here than, is, <laughs> than meets the eye. So what divisions do we have? So, and actually I misspoke, there are four, five, six, seven divisions on this, seven <laughs> divisions on this instrument. So there's a swell organ and mm -hmm. there is a box within the swell called the celestial division. Mm -hmm. So one can actually operate a set of um, swell shades within the swell. So you get two levels of expression, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. So there is um, some of the big reeds, um, cornopian and a big mixture that are within a separate box. What it allows you to do is close that box so you get a very different color. So the mixture is sort of um, not deadened, but it's much less brilliant, and it works much nicer for some types of music to well, have that capability. We actually just saw that recently on a show mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. it's a box within a box, and the, yep. bit, the loudest and the softest stops were in that second box. And that's what he did on the ethereal division, which is a division within the solo. Um, the lower manual couples as both, or doubles as both the choir manual mm -hmm. and the um, solo manual. Okay, well, and, and that organ we saw, they just didn't have different names. There was mm -hmm. just the swell and the swell, and the organist had I to see. know what was inside yeah, yeah, and what was out. Exactly. This might be easier for trying to remember what's where <laughs> if it's a completely different division. <laughs> So in this one, the loudest stop, the, the big tuba, is in that, as okay. well as the soft, softest um, Erzahler, or Voix Celeste Voix, mm -hmm. um, is in there as well. And so, yeah, exactly, you can deaden it to almost imperceptible levels. Well, let's hear some of it. First of all, everything is behind grills and chambers. We don't have any exposed pipes. How, right. do, how are the chambers laid out from where we're sitting here? So the great chamber is up above there. Okay. Um, so the left side is the left side. Okay. And below it is the solo. Okay. And the ethereal division, which speaks into the solo, is mm -hmm. right behind it. And then the choir division is up there. Um, okay. And the pedal division is behind. Mm -hmm. Most of the pedal stops are uh, borrowed from the different, yeah. uh, but there are a few independent pedal, pedal stops. Okay. And then the solo is over there. Um, and right behind the solo is the um, celestial division, which speaks into the swell. I'm sorry, I think I said solo, but the swell division is there. And then, okay, all right. Well, let's start with the great and um, see what kind of stops we've got in there and what they sound like. So the eight foot principal or the eight foot diapason on the on the great. with a four foot. Uh, with the two foot. Um, with a mixture.
one thing I should um, highlight um, is that everything is under expression, including the grate. Um, so it's a little bit, that's a little bit unusual. Um, it's very practical as a church organist to have everything. soften things a bit yeah, so it's nice um, to have that kind of control yep, exactly and i should note the mixture it doesn't just say four ranks it actually gives you the octave the interval numbers the 19th the 22nd the 26th the 29th so you know right. how that compares to the other stops you're, you're bringing it on with so you know it goes from exactly. two foot and then the 19th would be the next uh, step above so good i like that so what right. other what flutes do we have then in the <clears throat> great division so in the great there is a liebliga dact Um, with a forefoot. Um, Is that the same rank? It's borrowed? the same rank borrowed. So but they both say leave the down. Right. So there is a um, uh, there is also a corno dolce and a celeste that or a flute celeste that celeste with that as well. Um, so that's a. And it's also interestingly borrowed <laughs> onto the swell, hmm. so which is a little bit unusual to have uh, great stops playing from the swell, but mm -hmm. it actually is pretty convenient at times. And there's also a harmonic flute on the grate, so the big flute. Um. Yeah, that, that's very gentle um, compared to some of the more recent Schoenstein harmonic flutes I've heard, which are actually big, bold, uh, almost competing with the, the principal. And that one's a little more gentle. It hadn't quite found its it where is. it was going. Yep, it is. There is a concert flute, which is also solo which so that's much bigger that, but yeah yeah but provides a, that okay and again so, so for your french sounds so you got two big flutes there just one much bigger than the other <laughs> right right exactly and then you're, there are some uh, stops there some reed stops but they're all borrowed from other divisions um i do see some percussions in this division those also borrowed from another division, but let's go ahead and talk about them. Are there actual real percussions in this? Um, they're digital. Okay, so, <laughs> so we have a digital harp and celeste. The digital harp and celeste. Nice. And the celeste is the uh, above that. And the chimes are actually digital. They sound good. Well, let's um, come over here to this side, to the swell, since you mentioned it. Um, and tell me what we've got in the swell. So, um, the uh, flute foundation, um, there's an eight foot flute. Eight, four foot. Four foot. With a two foot. Um, and with a mixture. That's a bright mixture up there, and this one actually is, does say two foot fifteen, so we're doubling mm -hmm. the two foot, so it gets yep. more of that, um, that upper top of it there. So good. Um, all right, and there is a um, uh, open diapason. Uh, gems, which is a little bit bright, somewhere between a gems and a prestant. and it nicely blends with either the or with the flute. It gives one by itself just to see what... That's almost more of a principal sound. Than right, than exactly. Yep. Yeah, it works well with the principal. Okay. Yep, I okay, probably so. would have thought it was a pressed on, you know. Right, right, yeah. Just a small scale principle. Okay, yep. so you can use that with either the Borden or the open diapason. Exactly. Right, and then our two foots just called a flageolet, correct? Right. It's a fluty thing. All right, mm -hmm. what about our strings? 
So this instrument has a lot of strings. Um, so there is a uh, gamba on the on the um, on the swell. And then from there, that's all our flute pipes. We have some reeds in this division. Right, so an oboe. Very nice. Yeah. It's a small oboe, but it's yep. <laughs> very clear and cuts through. And uh, the trumpet, the cornopian. Mm -hmm. Sixteen foot oboe, country fagato. Hey, nice. So, and then a tremolo for those division, for all those stops in the division, and yep. then um, we have our sub and super couplers, and then another stop that it's just I've never heard it called that. Um, nominals pitch off. <laughs> That's a unison <laughs> off. It's a yeah. unison off, but they <laughs> decided no, unison off. wasn't clear enough or something. I don't, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, also, there's a box. Oh, so yeah, the box, box yeah. is in its own box okay. inside the celestial, which is a box mm -hmm. inside the swell. So wow. it's the box in a box in a box in a box. <laughs> now, can you actually control that inner box, or is it just to keep it distant? Okay, right. so it's just a, so a soft <laughs> box in two boxes. I get it. Let's um, hear that. But actually, it. Um, Can bring the you can really make it go away. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, well, I should have had the trimming on with that, so it's a little bit more. More obvious. Yeah. All right. Um, and then we have our choir slash solo division over there. <laughs> right. Which, um, they're both all their. I see two <clears throat> two different cancels, but they're all just in one. Or is there is that an that's actual right. dividing line that's just missing between? There's them? sort of a dividing okay. line. It's um, it's a this this is a, um, a, a more of a challenge to get used to I think for organists um, until you get to know the instrument because the both the, the choir and the solo are kind of blended here both are on the lower manual but the couplers control separately the choir and the solo and right, you have a, you have a sub and super coupler for all of those stops yes. in the two divisions on one manual so yes. yeah, I can see how that would be a little confusing right. well, yep, exactly. um, let's start with the choir stops then let's I see stop diapason so yes so stop diapason of flute with its forefoot. Um, the forefoot is a chimney flute. Chimney flute. Um, there's the two foot um, harmonic piccolo. There are actually uh, two two and two thirds, a nazard and a twelfth. Um, so one's more of a flute sound, and one's a little bit more principal sound. Let's see. That was the nazard, the flutier one. So. Right, yeah. and then a few other mutations on top. There's a uh, tiers, so which is nice with its um, with a eight foot. And uh, 19th, another mutation on top. One can form a, um, one can form a cornet, um, oops. Sort of yes, a you can cornet. mix and match any of those sounds. Exactly. Want to be part exactly. Of Very nice. All right, we have uh, strings over there, I see. Yep, so there's a solitional. And uh, uh, four foot and two foot are actually all um, borrowings of that. And 
is the 16 foot also? That's also of our own. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. um, and then there's an Undamaris tuned flat to the solution. Yeah, it's a big into Morrison solution. Yep. You can close all that down. Exactly. As you need it. Very exactly. nice. Okay. And then we have a reed. You see right. Reed. So clarinet. Um, and the clarinet is uh, borrowed to the grate if, uh, okay. if one needs it. Uh, but yeah, it's from... Nice big bold clarinet there. Yep. Really well. As a solo stop. Okay. Well, those are all of our choir stops. So let's go mm -hmm. to the solo now, which is right next to it. And yep. Tell me what we've got in there, starting in with that, uh, <clears throat> that gamba. <laughs> so there is a, a big string uh, gamba. Um, Bacon yep. sizzling <laughs> gamba. That's pretty skinny. It's <laughs> very skinny. Gamba. And uh, a celeste to go with. It's a, it's a small, but big, loud, yes. small scale string. So yeah, exactly. It's a good contrast to the others. Yep, exactly. And the positioning of the solo right um, at the front of mm -hmm. all of the speaks directly into the congregation, yeah. so it's really nice. Okay. It's the chancel. Let's keep going. Um, there is, I, we already mentioned the large um, mm -hmm. concert flute. And um, so within the, um, there's also the, uh, in addition to the big strings are the small strings. So there's a voix celeste and its, um, and its celesting partner. And then a forefoot that's just basically the octave. It's just the same. That's in the ethereal box, which is behind right. the solo box. And I, I misspoke earlier. You do have super and sub couplers for just the solo. I Correct. just didn't see them because they're buried down they're there. Here. Yeah, there are. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, okay. And then there are two other reeds on the solo. There's a French horn. Oh. So, Lovely solo stops there. Yeah, yeah. That, that's one of the things about this instrument. It's got so many wonderful recolors mm -hmm. that are very different. The, the English horn compared with the, um, compared with the clarinet. I mean, they're similar characters, but very Still, different colors. Yeah, yeah, choices even if it's mm -hmm. just to make something different. Right. And then we have one more big reed in there. For it. One more big reed. So uh, a tuba that's um, uh, doubled at 16 foot and also at 4 foot. Mm -hmm and it's duplicated on the grate as okay. well. So this one, um, the stop does not couple, which is kind of a clever design, mm -hmm. but it's again, something that organists have to get used to. Mm -hmm. So if you um, try to couple it to the grate, it won't, uh, which is nice because as, uh, as, the, as the organist, it's nice to be able to grab a horn and know <laughs> that it's not gonna come right. blasting out anywhere else <laughs> accidentally. It's good to know, yeah. Um, but, um, so this is the... the That's a, the, like I say, the big solo stuff. It's style. a big tool, yeah. It's available <clears throat> at, eight, at eight, 16, 8, 16, 8, and 16, 8, and 4, so yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, the nice thing about that, again, is that it can, it can solo above uh, most of the rest of the organ. Um, but very cleverly, um, it's within the ethereal division, so you can close the box. Mm -hmm. And by having the box closed, it forms us um, a chorus read. So. Um, if it's just playing on sort of over hours, the great principal yeah, chorus, yeah. but if you have um, the ethereal box closed, oh, you can barely hear it when yeah. it's in there. It yeah, just adds exactly. a little, yeah, it adds a little rumble, but. Yeah. Um, and have 
the 16, 8, and 4 and have it blend as a chorus read by doing that. Yeah. Okay. So, again, kind of clever in the design. Yeah. yeah. Well, you said most of the pedal stops were borrowed, but we do have mm -hmm. some independent stops. What do we have here in the pedal? <clears throat> so there is a 16-foot open wood. And that's what's behind us. That's behind the grill, yep. As well as um, the four-foot version of that same pipe. I believe it's the same. Yep, so that's in the 15th, which is an octave above that. That's all one all one rank of pipes. And there's also a sub-bass or sub-bass. So, um, but it was actually nicely done, again, um, by um, with the borrowings, because it, it just gives you a much greater range of balance with the instrument. So there's several 16-foot instruments, a swell board and borrowed from the swell, um, solutional borrowed from the choir, um, corn and dolce borrowed from the grain. So it's very nice to actually have those different flavors of 16. So one has actually uh, five foundational 16 foot stops. Yeah, that's great. Kind of nice. Yeah. Okay. And um, we have 32s in there. There are 32s, the and you'll notice that we don't have 32 foot high ceilings <laughs> or even. <laughs> so those are digital, okay. but um, but um, but pretty pretty uh, pretty good. <laughs> pretty, good sound. pretty much all of your reeds, then your solo reeds. Not not every single reed, but the the big trumpets and, and uh, your tuba are all available there at the top of the pedal as well. So you can yep. bring any of those. Very exactly. nice. Well, we've talked about the stops, but there's still more to talk about on this organ because there's mm -hmm. all the ways you can use all of these things to make <laughs> it play, and the things that the, the organist here needs to know to make this instrument work. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, talk about this little control panel that I'm mm -hmm. seeing up here on the left. So, um, I mentioned that there are one, two, three, four, five, six divisions, and the pedal's not included in there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there are, so those are the different divisions. And then across are the individual swell shoes. So, if uh, left alone, um, the swell shoes are great, um, choir, uh, swell, solo, and then a crescendo pedal. Okay. Um, but you can change the assignment of the swell shoes um, by pushing that, and then you can um, activate, have it set up things differently. So you could have all of the swell shoes opening with one pedal if you wanted. So, for example, you could have the swell shoe in the middle activating everything. That's the only shoe that can. That's the only one. That's the only one that can, can have all that. of these. So the others have limited options, but you can at least pick and choose right. how you want that to work. So that's interesting. So what I will typically do is let's see. I set it up so that they stay the same, um, but instead of I myself rarely use the crescendo pedal, mm -hmm. but I have it set up so that it operates the celestial and the ethereal divisions. You see. So that I have an independent. So, uh, so I'll shoot for that. So when that's on, there's no longer a crescendo pedal. Right? Correct. So you have to yep. remember which one you got. <laughs> exactly, right. So yeah. Does this set on a general piston, or can you say you have to remember? You to have to remember to press it. Yeah. Okay. So that, most uh, most guest organists come by, and I try to explain it, and they say, nope, not using it. That's just leave it alone. <laughs> that's fine. It'll work fine without it. <laughs> Very nice. So, um, well, and when it's in its normal mode, um, and if you open, say, the solo box, does the solo and ethereal boxes open together? Does it operate both of them? Actually, they're... Designed, did you tell me it was designed differently? They're, it's actually a little bit different. Okay. So, for example, when the, um, in the, they're partly open, but they can open more. So you actually have a little wider range of control. Okay. So for the, under normal operation... <laughs> as loud as the swell trumpet is oh. and it and it's and it's fine balance wise with the rest of the instrument but if you assign that box to a shoe then you could open it more or since it's in the oh, separate division you can have that extra box closed it's and it's it close it down it will close down so I can close it down <laughs> that gives you a lot of control, but that must take some time to get used to. 
correct. And <laughs> learning correct. how to yeah. operate this thing. Yep, yep. All right, well. But that's part of the fun. I've been here 19 years and I still am not bored with the instrument, <laughs> so <laughs> there's always things to try. Yep. I also noticed that the crescendo thing over there, this is a different type of indicator than I've seen before. You've not seen a roto enunciator? I've not, no. <laughs> so, new. Um, to be honest, I this is the general combination action, so okay. uh, different memory levels. Oh, I see. So you, and then this is one can set up different crescendo pedals, oh, so you can have it assigned. Um, you can uh, reassign what what comes on with the crescendo okay. pedal, and so you have 16 different levels of crescendo pedals. I see. And that's set through, I assume, that panel that's underneath. Yep. So there is a panel here that one can use for setting the nice. crescendo. Very and, nice. Yeah. So a very versatile instrument with a whole lot of control over everything. Yes. <laughs> very nice. So to get into the organ, we have to move some chairs out of the way. Access into the organ chambers is hidden behind and amongst the grill work for the organ. So um, this... Um speaks into the solo and so we're just sort of describing that there are uh, swell shades that speak into another chamber um, and then the swell shades for the solo are there speaking out okay. um, and then there's another door for that chamber yep there's another door okay. for that one this is our ethereal division here we're speaking through the solo out to the congregation we have the big hooded tuba here as well as pair of soft strings. The choir is above us and access to the choir uh, is via a trapdoor in the walkboard above. Um, so this is the choir division. So the clarinet, the, um, these are the, um, uh, the uh, strings <laughs> with a 16 foot overflow. Pneumatic mm. solos. Yep, solitional clarinet. And then the, yep, the rest of the solitional. And then the um, flute division mostly over here. Stop flute, um, harmonic, eight, the four foot flute and the two foot flute, stop that pacing. Undamaris is physically separated from the other one. That, uh, and this opens. So again, the choir division speaks out into the chancel. I should have left the swell shades open, but that speaks out into the chancel. And then this is the great division. So this also so speaks out. This is above the solo. The choir division is very densely packed, but everything uh, is easily accessible. You can move around easily and get to everything. One thing I should have um, pointed out on the um, on the um, the um, the tuba downstairs is that he, um, Jack Bethards was a fan of some of the Willis techniques of, of hooding the uh, reeds um, for a couple of reasons. One, it gives a little bit different character to the sound and it keeps the dust out of the reeds. <laughs> so it was a very good technique from the 19th century that he uh, continued. And 
this is for going down to these. view underneath the ethereal division. These are. Now we're going back to look at the pedal. Um, the Walker digital. That digital unit handles all of the digital stops, the harp chimes and the pedal stops. The speakers are uh, buried throughout this area. Once again, we go up into the pedal division by going through a trap door in the walkboard. Once we're up there, we see the uh, stopped base as well as the open, which is down on the other end. Very large scale, big open pipes. back out into the chancel and this is how we get into the solo division. The English horn has been very conveniently placed right at the front. And Doug says that's the one that needs the most attention so it's easy to get to right here but unfortunately the French horn um, has been placed much farther back on the chest. However, he says that one rarely needs attention, so it's okay that it's harder to get to back there in the middle. Now to get into the other side, we come across the chancel and here there's a door and a ladder takes us up into the chamber and we come up and we're at the bottom of the celestial division this is the one that speaks into the swell and the Vox Humana is right behind us as we come in there's a little peek into that box. Um, so this is the, um, the uh, let's see, celestial division. <laughs> it's got the um, trumpet. Um, this, this is a 16 foot reed, an eight foot reed, and the rest of the um, oboe stop, and then a mixture over there. So the mixture, how this works, this has to come. Oh, okay. Here we go. 
Once we go through the sliding swell shades there, we are in the swell, which is very packed full. Vision makes use of Haskell basses. Sean Stein uses those a lot throughout the organ. So a way to accommodate eight foot pipes, especially strings, when you don't have the full height you need. Here's a look underneath. You can go from the celestial division all the way under to the swell. So thank you, Doug, for showing us this wonderful Schoenstein organ from 1997. Uh, it's a fantastic job. Great listening to you play it and demonstrate the stops. And I assume if somebody wants to come uh, hear this instrument? They're absolutely welcome. The instrument's meant to be played, and I'm happy to 
happy to have people try it out. Wonderful. Well, if you're interested in hearing this organ or coming to play it, contact the church office. We'll put their website down in the description. Uh, also down there, you can find a link to the specification in the organ and to Schoenstein organs. Schoenstein, of course, is a member builder of APOBA, the Associated Pipe Organ Builders of America. They are a sponsor of the Organ Media Foundation and help us get out to make videos like these. If you would like to have a great instrument like this one or want your instrument updated or anything, uh, we recommend APOBA Builders. You can find their website and their list of member builders at apoba.com. We also want to thank our sponsors who help make videos like these possible. We have more videos coming out from Madison. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel and click the notification bell so you know when new videos come out, hopefully each Sunday for the next few weeks. Until then, you know where to find streaming classical organ music 24 hours a day on our three stations, OrganLive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. Thank you to all of our sponsors who make these videos possible. We couldn't do it without you. Until next week, I'm Brent Johnson. Bye-bye.